is that I've got a little bit of play. So the needle moves up and down just a tiny bit. The hook moves just a tiny bit. We are in the back of the shop. And today we have a Conso 206RB-5. This machine is locked up, does not want to turn. And uh, I thought it would be some fun that we could work on together. So let's check this out. So when a machine doesn't want to turn, you want to look for any binding in the mechanicals. And so I'm going to be doing a lot of looking at this machine while moving this and it may or may not be good video so we'll see how much of that i keep in here but um, the big thing is it doesn't want to move and yeah i could probably make it move if i tried really hard but um yeah i don't want to do that right now one thing i'm noticing here is that i've got a little bit of play so the needle moves up and down just a tiny bit the hook moves just a tiny bit, but this uh, thread release finger right here. So this is a little finger that comes over and hits a little tab on your hook to, to um, or what it does is it holds the hook in place. And then once every rotation, it moves out of the way to allow the thread to go through to allow clearance for the thread. So this piece should have some play in it and it does not want to move at all, does not want to budge. So that is a possibility. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up. So there's, you have the um, thread release finger right here and it's attached on this side. There's a shaft that goes through to this cam, this rides on a cam. And so this cam follower or whatever you call it, it's like a fork that goes over where the cam is and this, so both of these are attached to the shaft and they should be able to move freely. So I'm gonna just loosen up um, at least one side and see if we can move something. Okay, so that moves pretty freely. I wouldn't say that that's what's sticking our machine. It moves left and right, it doesn't move up and down, but that, you know, it's just something to look at. Yeah. It moves very, very freely, so. Not it, let's keep going. Now we do have to remember this needs to be adjusted when we put everything back together. Now, we're gonna run into some problems here because when I try to disconnect portions, like if I wanted to disconnect the hook from the clutch, and the clutch is right in here, I would have to loosen three screws that go around this shaft. Well, I can only get to one of the screws because the other two are, are not, not able to to be gotten to because of the shaft position. So that is not something that I can remove at this time. Let's take a look at somewhere else. We're gonna move our way back. Okay, so on this side is where your upper shaft and your lower shaft meet and you have gears. If I can loosen one of these gears, I can see if the lower shaft turns freely as opposed to the upper shaft. And there's a screw here that I can get to, and then there's a screw on the back side of this one that I'm gonna try, see if I can get to with some offset screwdrivers and see if we can get these two. Um, if not, I'm not sure about these two, but I'll, I'll try to disengage the upper shaft from the lower shaft. This is what we call half splitting. So whenever you're doing troubleshooting any equipment, you wanna half split the faults and that way you eliminate 50% of the possible causes in one shot. So this is halfway in between the top half and the lower half, which is why I'm going for that. So we've gotten both these screws off, uh, loosened, and now the 
needle moves up and down easily. Top shaft all move easily. This down shaft moves easily. And our problem is down in the hook area. Keep in mind that we will have to time everything when we're done because I just messed up the timing. Okay, it's getting easier to turn now. And I'm suspecting it's the actual hook area. There may be something mis misaligned in there or um, it may just need to be oiled really well. Because I can easily turn it by hand now. Unless it was touching the bottom of the feed dog. which is a possibility. But I'm still gonna take apart the hook, which is a pain. Uh, there are a million little tiny itsy bitsy screws that you have to pull apart. So we're gonna start with this, the thread release finger here. So that way. Luckily there is a tray down here in case I drop one of these, but 99% uh, of the time they will jump out of the tray and disappear forever. Okay, that was This customer, uh, this is their new machine. I fixed uh, their old machine and sent it back. Um, and they brought me this machine, which hasn't been working for a while. This one they bought new and they said that it's been nothing but problems since. Um, and it's a new, you know, Conso RB5. So I'm wondering if maybe some of the, it came from the factory with some adjustments that were off. Or maybe even a bad part, I don't know. But that's what we're here to find out. So I'm gonna tighten this back up, 
I just kind of made an approximate timing. Brought, there's no needle in there, but I brought it down, brought it up a little bit, and then also brought the hook to the top. Um, I could have the feed backwards. But no, that looks like... Okay, I'm uh, going to do a little bit of cleaning now that we... We have cleared whatever the issue was. We're gonna do some cleaning and uh, lubrication, and it's gonna be time to put it back together. And then once we get it back together, then we will do all of the timing and clearance checks and all that once we get it back together. So now what we can do is we can do some adjustments. I think I would like to dial in the timing right now. And then I'll do the feed adjustments once I get everything reassembled because right now I can easily see the hook going across that needle. All right, we got, we've got the uh, timing set right, we've got the needle height correct, and now if you're watching this, you see the needle's coming down, and then the hook, see how the needle deflects? Look at the point of the needle and you see it moving back. You don't want that to happen. So we need to move this hook back, and that is done with these screws right here, one and two. So those don't set the timing. It's actually, um, there's a flat on there so that this won't cause timing to be messed up, but it can move, you can move it this way and back this way. So we want to move it away from the needle, just a fraction, just like a millimeter maybe. So now that we've adjusted it, you can see that it goes over and does not touch that needle. It comes ever so close, but doesn't actually touch it. So when you're adjusting this, um, this is just supposed to tap at, at one specific moment so that the thread can get clear through all these clearances here and then the rest of the time it holds this um, the uh, bobbin case in the right position there seems to be a flat spot right here on this shaft so i had to adjust on the other side to make sure that would work and i think we've got it okay um so what I'm doing now is I am adjusting the feed dog. I put the needle plate on. I'm adjusting the feed dog with the needle inside the feed dog hole. So I can make sure that the needle's not touching the sides. The feed dog is straight um, in line with the needle plate and not rubbing the sides.
So this machine is adjusted to factory settings. Uh, I did check, so you check the feed dog height and when it actually comes up, you check to make sure the needle stays centered throughout the full travel. You make sure that the feed, the upper feeding presser foot feeds at the same time as the feed dog. And you make sure all these things are aligned properly. And that gives us a starting point for our adjustments. Now we're gonna sew with it and see how well we got. All right, we are threaded. We have some nice thick canvas, three layers to do some testing with. Uh, we have black thread as the upper thread, and then white thread is a little lower on the bobbin. Let's see what we've got. So this machine came in, it was locked up. Uh, we took apart, it, it started moving okay after we got the feed, um, pressed the feed dog off of there. And we were able to start getting it to sew again. Uh, we checked, we half splitted, all that kind of stuff to figure out exactly where the problem was. Um, the clutch probably needs to be replaced on this. I'm gonna talk to the owner and see if they want me to do that. It's sewing great, it's making great stitches. This machine hopefully will no longer be the one that they hate and be the one that they love to use. If not, we'll look at it again. Thanks for watching.